Hello, welcome to The Market Cover. I'm Adam Harder, Chief Investment Officer, along with Andrew Thrasher, Chartered Market Technician and Portfolio Manager. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, this post-Labor Day uh, Market Cover, where volumes tend to pick up. Uh, we come off the summertime when volumes tend to be a little bit lighter. Don't see as much activity, but they tend to pick up uh, following September as traders return to their desks and get uh, back to business. The things we're going to talk about this week, we're going to look at some key levels on a few equity readings. Uh, we're going to look at uh, enter uh, market analysis within oil. Uh, and then we're going to look at energy sector valuation. So Andrew's going to start us off uh, that 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 T in, in technician, charter market technician shows you he is a technical analysis specialist. And so this is going to be where he breaks down uh, some key levels of the market for us. Yeah, for this chart, we're going to start out with, we're actually, it's a, it's a chart we probably discussed in the market carver. I know we talked about it in our allocation meeting back in June. And uh, unfortunately, we have to come kind of back to it because the prices are starting to move back to those same levels. What we looked back back in June was these key price levels and some of the, the key parts of the market. What we're looking at here is consumer discretionary, XLY, financials, XLF, industrials, XLI, and then the small caps. And what we saw in the summer months was that the price action for these four corners of the market were starting to come back and test those key 2020 year highs. And we went with the conversation we were having in the allocation meeting, and I think we even did a market cover on it, was that we really needed to see the market hold these levels. If we broke below those 2020 levels, that was going to be kind of the, the next trigger for the market to decline. So we really were saying we need to see the market hold those levels if we're going to see a bounce higher. And that's exactly what happened. We came down, we saw each one of those were tested, um, those 2020 highs, and we bounced higher in June, got to rally for, for uh, several months now. And now we're unfortunately seeing the market roll back again over. Um, we had that counter trend rally, and now we're getting pretty close to where these price levels once again are going to get tested. And so if we do get uh, some more market weakness, we're going to then evaluate again, do those 2020 levels hold? The one downside to testing them again is it's just like if you were jumping up and down on, on a, uh, a block, uh, on ice, you're, the lake, let's say, froze over and you started jumping up and down. Each time you jumped, you made a little bit more of an impact on that ice. It became a little bit weaker as it was supporting your weight because you started breaking through different layers. We see the same thing in price action. Each time we see a level tested, we start chipping away at more and more of the demand that's coming in at that level. So each time we test it, we get a, a there's a little bit less of a buyers, less buyers, less buyers. And if we keep testing it, eventually it breaks and the sellers take over. So we're all, this is only the second time we're testing it. We'll see if there's enough buying support at these key levels. But we're continuing to watch. These are the three key uh, key sectors and then the small caps that if we do get those levels tested, we really want to see buyers come back in. Now, the next chart we're going to look at, um, actually, we talked about energy last week. And we're going to talk about energy again because it's just so important and it continues to be in the news. Um, we recently had OPEC, the, the organization in, in the Middle East and Russia, it's OPEC Plus, and they control a large amount of supply of oil. They just announced a, supp a supply cut, a production cut of, of 100,000 barrels as they try to bring the markets together. The, the amount that's traded on the stock exchange in the actual physical world, um, as they're, they've kind of been dislocated. And we can see a little bit of that here on this chart and why that they're starting to cut production to, to kind of fix what they believe is going on in the market. What we have here is, a, is just a pretty simple chart. On the bottom, we have the price of oil, uh, barrel of crude oil. And on the top, we have something called the crack spread. Now, that might not be a term very familiar to you, but all this is, it's looking at the difference in the price of oil and the price of the products that oil is used to produce. So think of it in terms of maybe lumber, the cost of houses and the cost of lumber. As the house, cost of houses go up, traditionally you would have the cost of lumber also rise. The same thing happens in the oil market. There's a lot of different products that get made um, they're, they're from the refined petroleum. And those products are seeing the prices go up while the price of oil is going down. And so we have that divergence. And traditionally, that crack spread, the price of the produced products for oil, typically wins out when these two disagree. We saw it back in March. You kind of see the, the, the dotted blue lines on that chart where the spread was going higher 
when crude prices were going down. And what happened was the result was crude then bounced higher. And we saw that run up to a little over $120 a barrel. Right now, once again, we see the, the, the cost of the, the products to produced out of petroleum, they're going higher. And we think this is a leading barometer that we could start seeing oil prices themselves go higher. Um, and we could see an increase in gasoline products and just general um, in the energy market as a whole should start rising from this. Um, if the, the, the this crack spread, the, the, the difference in crude oil versus the products is correct. And, and we think for historically it has been, we'll see if it is this time as well. Now moving, we're gonna go back to Adam. He's gonna talk about the valuation for the energy market, sticking with that, that energy market theme. And while energy has been one of the best performing sectors, how has that played out um, from a valuation perspective? Yeah, so the, the price for energy stocks has really been very strong now for 12 uh, months or over 12 months. Uh, however, the earnings for those companies has been even stronger. And you can see that on this chart here, which is a ratio of the price to earnings over time relative to the S&P 500. So each and every sector has its own valuation uh, that then in turn make up the S&P 500. And we can break down and look at the price to earnings ratio, which is a measure of value relative to the index. Some uh, sectors like technology traditionally carry a premium. You will pay more for those because the earnings grow by more. Uh, the price to earnings ratio for energy companies is traditionally a little bit lower than the S&P 500. Uh, and that's, that makes sense because it's a very cyclical industry, meaning their earnings uh, will go up and down really rapidly along with the price of oil. So there's a little bit of a discount because of that volatility. But what we see now is that even though the price has been strong, earnings have been even that much stronger. And the discount, uh, the relative bargain that you have in energy stocks relative to the S&P 500 has gotten even deeper. Uh, so over time, if you look at the average spread, uh, there's just a slight 0.4 uh, discount, but right now it is even more. In fact, if we rank all of the discounts three times, energy relative to the S&P 500 is in the 0.3 percentile, uh, meaning it's at a discount uh, that we've rarely seen. Now, part of that is that there is a large group of investors, uh, some individuals who, who really believe in uh, creating a green future, uh, as well as some pension funds who believe they are representing uh, their constituents who really don't want to own uh, legacy oil and gas. So therefore, that is one reason why we're seeing uh, this discount open up. And it is a sector that we continue to be positive on. Uh, first and foremost, like Andrew showed you, we're constructive on the overall oil market. And secondly, the stocks are cheap. Uh, and so we will stick with that. Now, of course, again, this is a cyclical industry. It can go up and down uh, very rapidly. And so we want to be careful how much we have exposed to that and how tied we want to be to one group. Uh, but we're, we remain positive on that on that sector as a whole. Uh, so that's really the uh, long and the short of it. We wanted to share market points with you. Uh, we do thank you for your time. I've got a few reminders for you. The first is that you're welcome to give us a call and schedule a complimentary meeting. Give us a call at 800-928-4001. And then secondly, uh, we have a tax package we'd like to offer you. If you don't currently work with us, uh, of course, if you do work with us, this is something that you expect and that you receive uh, every year where we help guide you through the key tax changes and things we want to look at as we plan the year in. Uh, feel free to, to get with us if you'd like a complimentary tax package. Uh, but then also, uh, while you're there, you would see this offer when you popped up on YouTube. But uh, go to YouTube, click the subscribe button, and you'll be uh, clued into videos like this one of which is for that text package. And then lastly, we have a radio show uh, that you can see each and every week uh, over the airwaves on WIBC Saturday morning or however you get your podcasts. Uh, thank you again and hope you have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.